Patagonia, Wikipedia article audio. Patagonia is a sparsely populated region located at the southern end of South America, shared by Argentina and Chile. The region comprises the southern section of the Andes Mountains as well as the deserts, pampas, and grasslands east of this southern portion of the Andes. Patagonia has two coasts, western facing the Pacific Ocean and eastern facing the Atlantic Ocean. Etymology Population and land area Largest cities Physical geography Geology Political divisions Climate Fauna History Pre-Columbian Patagonia Early European exploration Patagonian giants, early European perceptions Scientific exploration Chilean and Argentine colonization Conquest of the Desert and the 1881 Treaty Economy Livestock Tourism Energy Cuisine Foreign Land Buyers Issue Gallery Notes The Colorado and Barrancas Rivers, which run from the Andes to the Atlantic, are commonly considered the northern limit of Argentine Patagonia. The archipelago of Tierra del Fuego is sometimes included as part of Patagonia. Most geographers and historians locate the northern limit of Chilean Patagonia at Rilanque Cave Estuary. The name Patagonia comes from the word Patagon, which was used by Magellan in 1520 to describe the Indians of the region, whom his expedition thought to be giants. It is now believed that the people he called the Patagons were Tehuelches, who tended to be taller than Europeans of the time. The Argentine researcher Miguel Dura observed that the name Patagonia possibly derives from the ancient Greek region of modern Turkey called Paphlagonia, possible home of the Patagon personage in the chivalric romances Prima Leon printed in 1512, ten years before Magellan arrived in these southern lands. The hypothesis was accepted and published in a 2011 new review of Spanish philology report. Argentine Patagonia is for the most part a region of steppe-like plains, rising in a succession of 13 abrupt terraces about 100 meters at a time, and covered with an enormous bed of shingle almost bare of vegetation. In the hollows of the plains are ponds or lakes of fresh and brackish water. Towards Chilean territory the shingle gives place to porphyry, granite, and basalt lavas, animal life becomes more abundant and vegetation more luxuriant, consisting principally of southern beech and conifers. The high rainfall against the western Andes and the low sea surface temperatures offshore give rise to cold and humid air masses, contributing to the ice fields and glaciers the largest ice fields in the southern hemisphere outside of Antarctica. Among the depressions by which the plateau is intersected transversely, the principal ones are the Gualashu, south of the Rio Negro, the Macancheo, and Valcata, the Senger, the Desaado River. Besides these transverse depressions, there are others which were occupied by more or less extensive lakes, such as the Yagagtu, Musters and Kalhihuapi, and others situated to the south of Puerto de Saavia, in the center of the country. In the central region volcanic eruptions, which have taken part in the formation of the plateau during the Cenozoic, cover a large part of the land with basaltic lava caps, and in the western third, more recent glacial deposits appear above the lava. There, erosion which is caused principally by the sudden melting and retreat of ice aided by tectonic changes, 
has scooped out a deep longitudinal depression. Best in evidence where in contact with folded Cretaceous rocks which are uplifted by the Cenozoic granite. It generally separates the plateau from the first lofty hills, the ridges generally called the Precordillera. To the west of these, a similar longitudinal depression extends all along the foot of the snowy Andean Cordillera. This latter depression contains the richest and most fertile land of Patagonia. Lake basins along the Cordillera were also excavated by ice streams, including Lake Argentino and Lake Fagnano, as well as coastal bays such as Bahia and Udal. The geological limit of Patagonia has been proposed to be Huincul Fault which forms a major discontinuity. The fault truncates various structures including the Pampian origin found further north. Ages of basement rocks changes abruptly across the fault. There have been discrepancies among geologists on the origin of the Patagonian landmass. Victor Ramos has proposed that the Patagonian landmass originated as an allochthonous terrain that separated from Antarctica and docked in South America 250 to 270 ma in the Permian era. A 2014 study by R.J. Pankhurst and co-workers rejects any idea of a far-traveled Patagonia claiming it is likely of para-eutochtonous origin. The Mesozoic and Cenozoic deposits have revealed a most interesting vertebrate fauna. This, together with the discovery of the perfect cranium of a Chelonian of the genus Myolania, which is almost identical with Myolania oani of the Pleistocene age in Queensland, forms an evident proof of the connection between the Australian and South American continents. The Patagonian Myolania belongs to the Upper Chalk, having been found associated with remains of Dinosauria. Fossils of the Mid-Cretaceous Argentinosaurus, which may be the largest of all dinosaurs, have been found in Patagonia, and a model of the mid-Jurassic Piatnitskysaurus graces the concourse of the Trillo Airport. Of more than paleontological interest, the Middle Jurassic Los Moles Formation and the still richer Late Jurassic and Early Cretaceous Vaca Muerta Formation above it in the Nucane Basin are reported to contain huge hydrocarbon reserves partly accessible through hydraulic fracturing. Other specimens of the interesting fauna of Patagonia, belonging to the Middle Cenozoic, are the gigantic wingless birds, exceeding in size any hitherto known, and the singular mammal Pyrotherium, also of very large dimensions. In the Cenozoic marine formation, a considerable number of cetaceans has been discovered. During the Oligocene and early Miocene large swathes of Patagonia were subject to a marine transgression. The transgression might have temporarily linked the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, as inferred from the findings of marine invertebrate fossils of both Atlantic and Pacific affinity in La Cascada formation. Connection would have occurred through narrow epicontinental seaways that formed channels in a dissected topography. The Antarctic plate started to subduct beneath South America 14 million years ago in the Miocene forming the Chile Triple Junction. At first the Antarctic plate subducted only in the southernmost tip of Patagonia, meaning that the Chile Triple Junction was located near the Strait of Magellan. As the southern part of Nazca Plate and the Chile Rise became consumed by subduction the more northerly regions of the Antarctic Plate began to subduct beneath Patagonia so that the Chile Triple Junction advanced to the north over time. The asthenospheric window associated to the Triple Junction disturbed previous patterns of mantle convection beneath Patagonia inducing an uplift of CA1 km that reversed the Miocene transgression. At a state level, Patagonia lies inside two countries, 10% in Chile and 90% in Argentina. Both countries have organized their Patagonian territories into non-equivalent administrative subdivisions, provinces and departments in Argentina, 
and regions, provinces, and communes in Chile. Chile being a unitary state, its first-level administrative divisions the regions enjoy far less autonomy than Argentine provinces. Argentine provinces have elected governors and parliaments, while Chilean regions have government-appointed intendants. The Patagonian provinces of Argentina are New Cane, Rio Negro, Chubut, Santa Cruz, and Tierra del Fuego. The southernmost part of Buenos Aires province can also be considered part of Patagonia. The two Chilean regions Indies putely located entirely within Patagonia are Isen and Magallanes. Palena province, a part of the Los Lagos region, is also located within Patagonia. By some definitions Chilewe Archipelago, the rest of the Los Lagos region, and part of the Los Rios region are also part of Patagonia. The overall climate is cool and dry. The east coast is warmer than the west, especially in summer, as a branch of the southern equatorial current reaches its shores, whereas the west coast is washed by a cold current. However, Winters are colder on the inland plateaus east of the slopes and further down the coast on the southeast end of the Patagonian region. For example, at Puerto Montt, on the inlet behind Chilaue Island, the mean annual temperature is 11 degrees Celsius and the average extremes are 25.5 and 1.5 degrees C whereas at Bahia Blanca near the Atlantic coast and just outside the northern confines of Patagonia the annual temperature is 15 degrees Celsius and the range much greater, as temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius and below 5 degrees C are recorded every year. At Punta Arenas, in the extreme south, the mean temperature is 6 degrees Celsius and the average extremes are 24.5 and 2 degrees C. The prevailing winds are westerly, and the westward slope has a much heavier precipitation than the eastern in a rain shadow effect. The western islands close to Torres del Paine receive an annual precipitation of 4,000 to 7,000 mm whilst the eastern hills are less than 800 mm and the plains may be as low American Samoa 200 mm annual precipitation. Precipitation is highly seasonal in northwestern Patagonia. For example, Villa La Angostura in Argentina, close to the border with Chile, receives up to 434 mm of rain and snow in May. 297 mm in June, 273 in July, compared to 80 in February and 72 in March. The total for the city is 2,074 mm, making it one of the rainiest in Argentina. Further west, some areas receive up to 4,000 mm and more, especially on the Chilean side. In the northeast, the seasons for rain are reversed, most rain falls from occasional summer thunderstorms, but totals barely reach 500 mm in the northeast corner, and rapidly decrease to less than 300 mm. The Patagonian west coast, which belongs exclusively to Chile, has a cool oceanic climate, with summer maximum temperatures ranging from 14 degrees Celsius in the south to 19 degrees Celsius in the north and very high precipitation, from 2,000 to more than 7,000 mm in local microclimates. Snow is uncommon at the coast in the north, but happens more often in the south, and frost is usually not very intense. Immediately east from the coast are the Andes cut by deep fjords in the south and by deep lakes in the north, and with varying temperatures according to the altitude. The tree line ranges from close to 2000 m on the northern side, and diminishes southward to only 600-800 m in Tierra del Fuego. Precipitation changes dramatically from one spot to the other, and diminishes very quickly eastward. 
An example of this is Laguna Frias, in Argentina, receives 4,400 mm yearly. The city of Bariloche, about 40 km further east, receives about 1,000 mm, and the airport, another 15 km east, receives less than 600 mm. The easterly slopes of the Andes are home to several Argentine cities. San Martin de los Andes, Bariloche, El Bolson, Escal, El Calafate. Temperatures there are milder in the summer and much colder in the winter, with frequent snowfall. Daytime highs range from 3 degrees Celsius to 9 degrees Celsius in the north, and from 0 degrees Celsius to 7 degrees Celsius in the south whereas nights range from 5 degrees C to 2 degrees Celsius everywhere. Cold waves can bring much colder values, minus 21 degrees Celsius have been recorded in Bariloche, and most places can often see temperatures between 12 degrees C and 15 degrees C and highs staying around 0 degrees Celsius for a few days. Directly east of these areas, the weather becomes much harsher, precipitation drops to between 150 and 300 mm, the mountains no longer protect the cities from the wind, and temperatures become more extreme. Makincheo is a couple hundred kilometers east of Bariloche, at the same altitude on a plateau, and summer daytime temperatures are usually about 5 degrees Celsius warmer rising up to 35 degrees Celsius sometimes, but winter temperatures are much more extreme, the record is 35 degrees C, and it is not uncommon to see some nights 10 degrees Celsius colder than Bariloche. The plateaus in Santa Cruz province and parts of Chibut usually have snow cover through the winter, and often experience very cold temperatures. In Chile, the city of Balmaceda is known for being situated in this region, and for being the coldest place in Chile, with temperatures below 20 degrees C every once in a while. The northern Atlantic coast has warm summers and mild winters, with highs of about 12 degrees Celsius and lows about 2-3 degrees C. Occasionally, temperatures reach 10 degrees C or 40 degrees Celsius and rainfall is very scarce. It only gets a bit colder further south in Chibut, and the city of Comodoro Rivadavia has summer temperatures of 24 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius, nights of 12 degrees Celsius to 16 degrees Celsius, and winters with days around 10 degrees Celsius and nights around 3 degrees Celsius, and less than 250 millimeters of rain. However, there is a drastic drop as we move south to Santa Cruz, Rio Gallegos, in the south of the province, has summer temps of 17 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius, and winter temperatures of 2 degrees Celsius to 6 degrees Celsius, with nights between 5 degrees C and 0 degrees Celsius despite being right on the coast. Snowfall is common despite the dryness, and temperatures are known to fall to under 18 degrees C and to remain below freezing for several days in a row. Rio Gallegos is also among the windiest places on Earth, with winds reaching 100 km h occasionally. Tierra del Fuego is extremely wet in the west, relatively damp in the south, and dry in the north and east. Summers are cool, cloudy in the south, and very windy. Winters are dark and cold, but without extreme temperatures in the south and west. In the east and north, winters are much more severe, with cold snaps bringing temperatures down to 20 degrees C all the way to Rio Grande on the Atlantic coast. Snow can fall even in the summer in most areas as well. The depletion of the ozone layer over the South Pole has been reported as being responsible for blindness and skin cancer in sheep in Tierra del Fuego, 
and concerns for human health and ecosystems. The guanaco, the cougar, the Patagonian fox, the Patagonian hog-nosed skunk, and the Magellanic tuco tuco are the most characteristic mammals of the Patagonian plains. The Patagonian steppe is one of the last strongholds of the Guanaco and Darwin's Rias, which had been hunted for their skins by the Tehuelches, on foot using boladoras, before the diffusion of firearms and horses, they were formerly the chief means of subsistence for the natives who hunted them on horseback with dogs and bullas. Viscachas and the Patagonian Mara are also characteristic of the steppe and the pampas to the north. Bird life is often abundant. The southern Caracara is one of the characteristic objects of a Patagonian landscape, the presence of austral parakeets as far south as the shores of the strait attracted the attention of the earlier navigators and green-backed fire crowns, a species of hummingbird, may be seen flying amidst the falling snow. One of the largest birds in the world, the Andean condor can be seen in Patagonia. Of the many kinds of waterfowl it is enough to mention the Chilean flamingo, the upland goose, and in the strait the remarkable steamer ducks. Signature marine fauna include the southern right whale, the Magellanic penguin, the orca, and elephant seals. The Valdez Peninsula is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, designated for its global significance as a site for the conservation of marine mammals. The Patagonian freshwater fish fauna is relatively restricted compared to other similar southern hemisphere regions. The Argentine part is home to a total of 29 freshwater fish species, 18 of which are native. The introduced are several species of trout, common carp, and various species that originated in more northerly parts of South American. The natives are osmoriforms, temperate perches, catfish, neotropical silversides and carisiforms. Other Patagonian freshwater fauna include the highly unusual eaglet crustacean. Human habitation of the region dates back thousands of years, with some early archaeological findings in the area dated to at least the 13th millennium BC, although later dates of around the 10th millennium BC are more securely recognized. There is evidence of human activity at Monte Verde in Lanquiwe province. Chile dated to around 12,500 BC. The glacial period ice fields and subsequent large meltwater streams would have made settlement difficult at that time. The region seems to have been inhabited continuously since 10,000 BC, by various cultures and alternating waves of migration, the details of which are as yet poorly understood. Several sites have been excavated notably caves such as Cueva del Melodon in Ultima Esperanza in southern Patagonia, and Tres Arroyos on Tierra del Fuego, that support this date. Hearths, stone scrapers, animal remains dated to 9400-9200 BC have been found east of the Andes. The Cueva de los Manos is a famous site in Santa Cruz, Argentina. A cave at the foot of a cliff is covered in wall paintings, particularly the negative images of hundreds of hands, believed to date from around 8000 BC. Based on artifacts found in the region, it appears that hunting of guanaco, and to a lesser extent rhea, were the primary food sources of tribes living on the eastern plains. It is unclear whether the megafauna of Patagonia, including the ground sloth and horse, were extinct in the area before the arrival of humans, although this is now the more widely accepted account. It is also not clear if domestic dogs were part of early human activity. Bolas are commonly found and were used to catch guanaco and rhea. A maritime tradition existed along the Pacific coast, 
whose latest exponents were the Yagan to the south of Tierra del Fuego, the Kashkar between Tadao Peninsula and Tierra del Fuego and the Chano people in the Chano's archipelago. The indigenous peoples of the region included the Tehuelches, whose numbers and society were reduced to near extinction not long after the first contacts with Europeans. Tehuelches included the Gununakina to the north, Mekarnuikank in south central Patagonia, and the Ayanakank or southern Tehuelche in the far south, north of the Magellan Strait. On Isla Grande de Tierra del Fuego, the Selk Nam and Hausch lived in the north and southeast respectively. In the archipelagos to the south of Tierra del Fuego were Yumana, with the Kaiscar in the coastal areas and islands in western Tierra del Fuego and the southwest of the mainland. In the Patagonian archipelagos north of Tadao Peninsula lived the Chanos. These groups were encountered in the first periods of European contact with different lifestyles, body decoration, and language, although it is unclear when this configuration emerged. Towards the end of the 16th century, Mapuche-speaking agriculturalists penetrated the western Andes and from there across into the eastern plains and down to the far south. Through confrontation and technological ability, they came to dominate the other peoples of the region in a short period of time, and are the principal indigenous community today. The Mapuche model of domination through technological superiority and armed confrontation was later repeated as Europeans implemented a succeeding but conceptually identical cycle, essentially replacing the position of the former dominators with a new, albeit predominantly European class. It is possible that navigators such as Goncalo Coelho and Amerigo Vespucci had reached the area, however Vespucci's failure to accurately describe the main geographical features of the region such as the Rio de la Plata casts serious doubt on this claim. Possibly the first European description of a part of the Patagonian coast was in a Portuguese voyage around 1512 traditionally attributed to Captain Diogo Ribeiro, who after his death was replaced by Estevão de Froes, and was guided by the pilot and cosmographer João de Lisboa. It has been claimed that the expedition, after reaching Rio de la Plata eventually reached San Matias Gulf, at 42 degrees south. The expedition reported that after going south of the 40th parallel, they found a land or a point extending into the sea, and further south, a gulf. The expedition is said to have rounded the gulf for nearly 300 kilometers and sighted a continent on the southern side of the gulf. The Atlantic coast of Patagonia was first fully explored in 1520 by the Spanish expedition led by Ferdinand Magellan who on his passage along the coast named many of its more striking features San Matias Gulf, Cape of 11,000 Virgins, and others. Magellan's fleet spent a difficult winter at what he named Puerto San Julian before resuming its voyage further south on August 21, 1520. During this time it encountered the local inhabitants, likely to be Tehuelche people, described by his reporter, Antonio Pigafetta, as giants called Patagons. Rodrigo de Isla, sent inland in 1535 from San Matias by Simon de Alcazaba Sotomayor, Juan Ladrilleros and Hurtado de Mendoza helped to make known the Pacific coasts, and while Sir Francis Drake's voyage in 1577 down the Atlantic coast, through the Strait of Magellan and northward along the Pacific coast was memorable, yet the descriptions of the geography of Patagonia owe much more to the Spanish explorer Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa, who, devoting himself especially to the southwest region, made careful and accurate surveys. The settlements which he founded at Nombre de Dios and San Felipe were neglected by the Spanish government, 
the latter being abandoned before Thomas Cavendish visited it in 1587 and so desolate that he called it Port Famine. After the discovery of the route around Cape Horn the Spanish crown lost interest in southern Patagonia until the 18th century when the coastal settlements Carmen de Patagones, San Jose, Puerto de Saavedra, and Nueva Colonia Florida Blanca were established, although it maintained its claim of a de jure sovereignty over area. In 1669, the district around Puerto de Saada was explored by John Davis and was claimed in 1670 by Sir John Narborough for King Charles II of England, but the English made no attempt to establish settlements or explore the interior. The first European explorers of Patagonia observed that the indigenous people in the region were taller than the average Europeans of the time prompting some of them to believe that Patagonians were giants. According to Antonio Pigafetta, one of the Magellan expedition's few survivors and its published chronicler, Magellan bestowed the name Patageo on the inhabitants they encountered there, and the name Patagonia for the region. Although Pigafetta's account does not describe how this name came about, Subsequent popular interpretations gave credence to a derivation meaning land of the big feet. However, this etymology is questionable. The term is most likely derived from an actual character name, Patagon, a savage creature confronted by Primalian of Greece, the hero in the homonymous Spanish chivalry novel by Francisco Vazquez. This book published in 1512, was the sequel of the romance Pomeranda Oliva, much in fashion at the time, and a favorite reading of Magellan. Magellan's perception of the natives, dressed in skins, and eating raw meat, clearly recalled the uncivilized Patagon in Vazquez's book. Novelist and travel writer Bruce Chatwin suggests etymological roots of both Patagon and Patagonia in his book, In Patagonia, noting the similarity between Patagon and the Greek word pi alpha tau alpha gamma omicron, which means a roaring or gnashing of teeth. The main interest in the region sparked by Pigafetta's account came from his reports of their meeting with the local inhabitants whom they claimed to measure some 9 to 12 feet in height, so tall that we reached only to his waist, and hence the later idea that Patagonia meant big feet. This supposed race of Patagonian giants or Patagonas entered into the common European perception of this little known and distant area, to be further fueled by subsequent reports of other expeditions and famous name travelers like Sir Francis Drake which seemed to confirm these accounts. Early charts of the New World sometimes added the legend Regio Gigantum to the Patagonian area. By 1611 the Patagonian god Cetabas was familiar to the hearers of the Tempest. The concept and general belief persisted for a further 250 years and was to be sensationally reignited in 1767 when an official account was published of Commodore John Byron's recent voyage of global circumnavigation in HMS Dolphin. Byron and crew had spent some time along the coast, and the publication seemed to give proof positive of their existence, the publication became an overnight bestseller. Thousands of extra copies were to be sold to a willing public, and other prior accounts of the region were hastily republished. However, the Patagonian giant frenzy died down substantially only a few years later, when some more sober and analytical accounts were published. In 1773 John Hawksworth published on behalf of the Admiralty a compendium of noted English Southern Hemisphere explorers' journals, including that of James Cook and John Byron. In this publication, drawn from their official logs, it became clear that the people Byron's expedition had encountered were no taller than 6 foot 6 inch, 
very tall but by no means giants. Interest soon subsided, although awareness of and belief in the concept persisted in some quarters even up into the 20th century. In the second half of the 18th century, European knowledge of Patagonia was further augmented by the voyages of the previously mentioned John Byron, Samuel Wallace, and Louis Antoine de Bougainville. Thomas Faulkner, a Jesuit who resided near 40 years in those parts, published his description of Patagonia. Francisco Viedma founded El Carmen. Nowadays Carmen de Patagones and Antonio settled the area of San Julian Bay where he founded the colony of Florida Blanca and advanced inland to the Andes. Basilio Villarino ascended the Rio Negro. Two hydrographic surveys of the coasts were of first-rate importance, the first expedition including HMS Adventure and HMS Beagle under Philip Parker King, and the second being the voyage of the Beagle under Robert Fitzroy. The latter expedition is particularly noted for the participation of Charles Darwin who spent considerable time investigating various areas of Patagonia onshore, including long rides with gauchos in Rio Negro, and who joined Fitzroy in a 200 miles expedition taking ships boats up the course of the Santa Cruz River. In the early 19th century, the Araucanization of the natives of northern Patagonia intensified and a lot of Mapu Ches migrated to Patagonia to live as nomads raising cattle or pillaging the Argentine countryside. The cattle stolen in the incursions would later be taken to Chile through the mountain passes and traded for goods, especially alcoholic beverages. The main trail for this trade was called Camino de los Chilenos and run a length of about 1,000 kilometers from the Buenos Aires province to the mountain passes of Nucane province. The Lonco Cafiocura crossed the Andes from Chile to the Pampas around 1,830, after a call from the governor of Buenos Aires, Juan Manuel de Rosas, to fight the Boroano people. In 1859, he attacked Bahia Blanca in Argentina with 3,000 warriors. As in the case of Cafiocura, many other bands of Mapu Ches got involved in the internal conflicts of Argentina until conquest of the desert. To counter the cattle raids, a trench called Zanja de Alcina was built by Argentina in the Pampas in the 1870s. In the mid-19th century, the newly independent nations of Argentina and Chile began an aggressive phase of expansion into the south, increasing confrontation with the Indians of the region. In 1860, a French adventurer Aurelie Antoine de Townens proclaimed himself king of the Kingdom of Araucania and Patagonia of the Mapuche. Following the last instructions of Bernardo O'Higgins, the Chilean president Manuel Bulnas sent an expedition to the Strait of Magellan and founded Fuerte Bulnas in 1843. Five years later, the Chilean government moved the main settlement to the current location of Punta Arenas, the oldest permanent settlement in southern Patagonia. The creation of Punta Arenas was instrumental in making Chile's claim of the Strait of Magellan permanent. In the 1860s sheep from the Falkland Islands were introduced to the lands around the Straits of Magellan, and throughout the 19th century the sheep farming grew to be the most important economic sector in southern Patagonia. George Chaworth Musters in 1869 wandered in company with a band of Tehuelches through the whole length of the country from the Strait to the Manzaneros in the northwest, and collected a great deal of information about the people and their mode of life. Argentine authorities worried that the strong connections Araucanized tribes had with Chile would allegedly give Chile certain influence over the Pampas. Argentine authorities feared an eventual war with Chile over Patagonia where the natives would side with the Chileans and that it would therefore be fought in the vicinities of Buenos Aires. 
The decision of planning and executing the conquest of the desert was probably triggered by the 1872 attack of Kuful Kura and his 6,000 followers on the cities of General Alvier, Vaintacinco de Mayo and Nuve de Julio, where 300 Criollos were killed, and 200,000 heads of cattle taken. In the 1870s, the conquest of the desert was a controversial campaign by the Argentine government, executed mainly by General Julio Argentino Roca, to subdue or, some claim, to exterminate the native peoples of the South. In 1885, a mining expeditionary party under the Romanian adventurer Julius Popper landed in southern Patagonia in search of gold, which they found after traveling southwards towards the lands of Tierra del Fuego. This further opened up some of the area to prospectors. European missionaries and settlers arrived through the 19th and 20th centuries, notably the Welsh settlement of the Chibut Valley. During the first years of the 20th century, the border between the two nations in Patagonia was established by the mediation of the British Crown. Numerous modifications have been made since then, the last conflict having been resolved in 1994 by an arbitral tribunal constituted in Rio de Janeiro, granting Argentina sovereignty over the southern Patagonia icefield. Cerro Fitzroy and Laguna del Desierto. Until 1902, a large proportion of Patagonia's population were natives of Chilawe Archipelago who worked as peons in large livestock farming estancias. As manual labor they had status below the gauchos and the Argentine, Chilean and European landowners and administrators. Before and after 1902, when the boundaries were drawn, a lot of kilotes were expelled from the Argentine side due to fear of what having a large Chilean population in Argentina could lead into in the future. These workers founded the first inland Chilean settlement in what is now the Ison region, Balmaceda. Lacking good grasslands on the forest-covered Chilean side, the immigrants burned down the forest setting fires that could last more than two years. The area's principal economic activities have been mining, whaling, livestock agriculture, and oil after its discovery near Comodoro Rivadavia in 1907. Energy production is also a crucial part of the local economy. Railways were planned to cover continental Argentine Patagonia to serve the oil, mining, agricultural and energy industries, and a line was built connecting San Carlos de Bariloche to Buenos Aires. Portions of other lines were built to the south, but the only lines still in use are La Trocata in Escal, the train of the end of the world in Ushuaia, both heritage lines, and a short-run tren Historico de Bariloche to Perito Moreno. In the western forest-covered Patagonian Andes and archipelagos, wood lodging has historically been an important part of the economy, it impelled the colonization of the areas of the Nahuel Huapi and Lacar lakes in Argentina and Guaytacaz archipelago in Chile. Sheep farming introduced in the late 19th century has been a principal economic activity. After reaching its heights during the First World War, the decline in world wool prices affected sheep farming in Argentina. Nowadays about half of Argentina's 15 million sheep are in Patagonia, a percentage that is growing as sheep farming disappears in the Pampa. Chibut is the top wool producer with Santa Cruz second. Sheep farming revived in 2002 with the devaluation of the peso and firmer global demand for wool. Still there is little investment in new abattoirs, and often there are phytosanitary restrictions to the export of sheep meat. Extensive valleys in the Cordilleran Range have provided sufficient grazing lands, and the low humidity and weather of the southern region make raising merino and Corydale sheep common. 
Livestock also includes small numbers of cattle, and in lesser numbers pigs and horses. Sheep farming provides a small but important number of jobs for rural areas with little other employment. In the second half of the 20th century, tourism became an ever more important part of Patagonia's economy. Originally a remote backpacking destination, the region has attracted increasing numbers of upmarket visitors, cruise passengers rounding Cape Horn or visiting Antarctica, and adventure and activity holiday makers. Principal tourist attractions include the Perito Moreno Glacier, the Valdez Peninsula, the Argentine Lake District and Ushuaia and Tierra del Fuego. Tourism has created new markets locally and for export for traditional crafts such as Mapuche handicrafts, guanaco textiles, and confectionery and preserves. A spin-off from increased tourism has been the buying of often enormous tracts of land by foreigners, often as a prestige purchase rather than for agriculture. Buyers have included Sylvester Stallone, Ted Turner, and Christopher Lambert and most notably Luciano Benetton, Patagonia's largest landowner. His Compania de Tierra Sud has brought new techniques to the ailing sheep rearing industry and sponsored museums and community facilities, but has been controversial particularly for its treatment of local Mapuche communities. At the urging of the Chilean government, the Spanish company Endesa hopes to build a number of large hydroelectric dams in the Chilean Patagonia, which has raised environmental concerns from a large number of local and international NGOs. The first dams proposed would be built on the Baker and Pascoa rivers, but dams have also been proposed on others, including the famed Futalefa River in Chile and Santa Cruz River in Argentina. The dams would affect the minimum ecological flows and threaten the fishing, wilderness tourism and agricultural interests along the river. The electricity would be fed into high-voltage lines and taken 1,200 miles north to the industry and mining hub around Santiago. The lines would cut through a number of previously pristine national parks and protected areas. The rightist Panera government considered the power to be essential for economic growth, while opponents claimed it would destroy Patagonia's growing tourism industry. On June 11, 2014, the new leftist Bachelet government rejected the dam project, estimated to be worth about $8 billion, after years of pressure from environmental groups. Due to its sparse rainfall in agricultural areas, Argentine Patagonia already has numerous dams for irrigation, some of which are also used for hydropower. The Limay River is used to generate hydroelectricity at five dams built on its course, Alicura, Piedra del Aguila, Pichi Picon Lefu, El Chacon, and Arroyito. Together with the Cerros Colorados complex on the New Cane River they contribute with more than one quarter of the total hydroelectric generation in the country. Coal is mined in the Rio Turbio area and used for electrical generation. Patagonia's notorious wines have already made the area Argentina's main source of wind power, and there are plans for major increases in wind power generation. Patagonia has always been Argentina's main area, and Chile's only area, of conventional oil and gas production. Oil and gas have played an important role in the rise of New Cane Cipollity as Patagonia's most populous urban area, and in the growth of Comodoro Rivadavia, Punta Arenas, and Rio Grande as well. The development of the New Cane Basin's enormous unconventional oil and gas reserves through hydraulic fracturing has just begun, but the YPF, Chevron Loma Campana field in the Vaca Muerta formation is already the world's largest producing shale oil field outside North America according to YPF CEO Miguel Galusio. 
Argentine Patagonian cuisine is largely the same as the cuisine of Buenos Aires grilled meats and pasta with extensive use of local ingredients and less use of those products which have to be imported into the region. Lamb is considered the traditional Patagonian meat, grilled for several hours over an open fire. Some guidebooks have reported that game, especially guanaco, and introduced deer and boar, are popular in restaurant cuisine. However, since the guanaco is a protected animal in both Chile and Argentina, it is unlikely to appear commonly as restaurant fare. Trout and centalia are also common, though overfishing of centalia has made it increasingly scarce. In the area around Bariloche, there is a noted alpine cuisine tradition, with chocolate bars and even fondue restaurants, and tea rooms are a feature of the Welsh communities in Gaiman and Trevelin as well as in the mountains. Since the mid-1990s there has been some success with winemaking in Argentine Patagonia, especially in New Cane. Foreign Investors including Italian multinational Benetton Group, Ted Turner, Joseph Lewis, and the environmentalist Douglas Tompkins, own major land areas. This situation has caused several conflicts with local inhabitants and the governments of Chile and Argentina, for example the opposition by Douglas Tompkins to the planned route for Carretera Austral in Pumalan Park. A scandal is also brewing about two properties owned by Ted Turner, the Estancia La Primavera, located inside Nahuel Huapi National Park, and the Estancia Colin Cura. Benetton has faced criticism from Mapush organizations, including Mapush International Link, over its purchase of traditional Mapush lands in Patagonia. The Curran and Kona Wellcare family was evicted from their land in 2002 following Benetton's claim to it, but the land was restored in 2007. Nawal Huapi Lake, near Bariloche, Argentina Chaitan volcano stretching across Patagonia into San Jorge Basin in the Atlantic Ocean. Satellite view of the Perito Moreno Glacier and the Andean Ice Sheet. Road Y50 towards Estancia Rio Verde, Magallanes, Chile. Laguna Cabeza de Mar, 50 km north of Punta Arenas, Magallanes, Chile. Perito Moreno Glacier, Santa Cruz Province, Argentina. Monte Fitzroy, Santa Cruz Province, Argentina. The city of Trilu, Chibut Province, Argentina Guanacos Welsh Settlement in Patagonia Southern Right Whale in Peninsula Valdez, Chibut Province, Argentina Torres del Paine, Chile Cuernos del Paine, Torres del Paine National Park, Chile Grey Glacier Torres del Paine National Park, Chile PIO-11 Glacier, Bernardo O'Higgins National Park, Chile This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. Patagonia Encyclopedia Britannica Cambridge University Press Coordinates 41 degree 4837 S 68 degree 5423 W 41.81015 degrees south 68.90627 degrees west slash dash 41.81015 68.90627